Some of you watching might know that I am a huge, huge fan of the Mega Man series. I've done loads of videos on the series in the past. I've done Let's Plays of all the original games, but there was one game in the series that I've always wanted to play over any of the others. And I finally, finally got it. Like the title suggests, this video is going to be all about this game here, Mega Man The Wily Wars for the Mega Drive. This is actually a special edition of the game that Retrobit released recently, and when I found out about this a few years ago, I knew I had to have it day one. Of course, this video is sponsored by Bifrost Bridge Studios. They've just finished their Kickstarter for their graphic novel Gaia's Seed. I'll put a link in the description so you can check out what it was, and definitely stay tuned to their website and social medias so you can find out all about it in the future. And now, on with the video. So the first time I found out about the Wily Wars was way back in college in around 2008 and already by that point I was a huge, huge Mega Man fan. In fact, Mega Man 4 is one of the first games that I ever played when I was like two or three years old and ever since then I've been a huge fan of the series. When I found out about this game, it was already way out of my price range. For those of you that don't know, this game actually only got a physical release here in the UK and over in Japan. In America, they actually only got it on a download service called Sega Channel, and the UK release was very limited in quantity as well. So that's why, even way back in 2008, the game was already at least a few hundred pound on eBay, and back then, being a broke college student, I just couldn't afford it at the time, but I really wish I could have, because these days it goes for well over a thousand pound. Let's first take a look at an unboxing of this special edition because it is actually incredible. Let's take a look. So immediately you can tell that this is such a high production item. The lenticular artwork here on this front cover is just absolutely fantastic. And Mega Man's helmet embossed on the back as well is a really nice touch. And inside you get a nice variety of sprite work. And then inside this flap here you get a selection of different lenticular artworks that you can actually use to replace the main one on the front cover. I think that is just such a fantastic idea. And now let's take a look at what comes inside this fantastic outer packaging. So of course the Mega Drive box is in there, but there's also a poster and some cards as well. Here's what the poster looks like when it's unfolded. I would love for it to go up in the new game room when I move into the new place. And here's a look at the trading cards that come in there as well. Each one has some really nice classic artwork, along with some Top Trump style stats on the back, and a bit of a description about each of the characters as well. I'm not exactly sure how they chose which ones to include as the cards. It would have been really cool to have the entire set of Robot Masters, and then you could actually refer to the cards to see what their weaknesses actually are. But even so, as a nice little collectible, it's still a really cool thing to have. Now for me, even though all of those extras are really cool, the thing that really excited me was actually holding the Mega Drive box and seeing the screenshots on the back. I was just so excited. Just take a look at the cartridge here. It looks absolutely incredible. And it also has a really nice, full colour instruction booklet that's actually in English and Japanese. And within the instruction booklet as well, as you can see, it has some really nice artwork and it actually has a lot of information about the game. I wonder whether this is actually the same as the original release or whether they went above and beyond for this version. And we're not done yet, it also comes with this really nice envelope here and inside there, this is your collector's certificate. So you can see I got number 41 of 20,000. So there are quite a lot of copies out there. I just hope a lot of them didn't end up on eBay and the people that actually wanted them managed to get it. And the last really cool thing in here is this little sticker book. I'm not really sure whether I'll actually use any of them, but they do look really cool and I'm so happy to have all of this. So now with that unboxing out of the way, let's take a look at the game itself. So for this review, and actually for all reviews on the channel going forward, I'm actually going to split it up into a few different categories, just like I did with the Game Boy Game Jam, but I'm actually going to take the time to fully explain my scores for each category and then give it an overall at the end. So let's first begin by taking a look at the gameplay. So the game contains updated versions of the first three games, and each one is faithfully recreated based on the NES originals, with updated graphics and music. As well as the three main games, it also includes an unlockable challenge mode called the Wily Tower, which is a set of three stages and you actually get to pick any weapon or item from the first three games. It's a really, really cool feature and I'll tell you more about it later on in the video. Before we do get into the main review though, you might have noticed that the game's actually running slower than you might be used to. And that's because, unfortunately, it's not optimised for PAL consoles. And of course, this was a problem with a lot of games at the time, but I did kind of hope that Retrobit would have gone 
back and upgraded it to run at full speed, but unfortunately that's not the case here. Of course I do have ways of playing it in 60Hz, but I really wanted to experience this game the way I would have if I was to have bought it back in the day. So for this review, I did play through the entire game in 50Hz, which means that the game ran about 16% slower than it should have. It wasn't so much of a big deal for the first two games, which when I first played them on the NES way back in the day, they actually both ran at 50 hertz as well, but unfortunately the third game here in the UK was actually optimised for PAL consoles on the NES, which means that at the time it did actually run at the same speed as the American and Japanese counterparts. But unfortunately in this release it actually runs slower, so it's kind of weird playing a game that came out five years after the NES game actually being a worse experience than the NES game. So the games feel almost the same as the NES, but there's a few weird design choices that I felt straight away as being a bit off compared to what I'm used to. Disregarding the slow gameplay because it's running at 50Hz, the actual movement in general just felt a little bit off. Take this section in Mega Man 2 for example, where you have to jump across this gap using one of the items that you've collected throughout the game. In the original game, I can do this section no problem whatsoever, but on the Mega Drive I kept sliding off or not being able to get close enough to the edge in order to put the next item down in time. I actually repeated this 4 or 5 times until I gave up, ran out of weapon energy and had to just kill myself and start the entire level over from the beginning, just so that I could get back to there and try it again. I'd never had this problem before. Another really weird thing that was almost immediately apparent was the way that you jump onto platforms that are just too high for your character to get to naturally. You do this kind of weird slide to the side and then jolt up a bit, and it is really off-putting, especially in the first game. Take this bit from Elecman's stage here, where you have to jump up these platforms at the beginning. Just like in Mega Man 2 on the NES, I can easily do this no problem, but here on the Mega Drive I really struggled with these simple platforming challenges which really shouldn't be a problem in the main games. The menus also sometimes lag, which is really frustrating, especially in Mega Man 3. The rest of the game though did feel mostly okay, I know I have a lot of muscle memory with these games because they are games I've probably played all of the NES games from start to finish at least 10 times each by now. It's something that I like to do every single year is to go back and play through all of the original Mega Man games. So maybe I'm just being a bit picky because I am such a huge fan and even the slightest change in gameplay is immediately apparent to me. I'm sure if you were coming to this as a newcomer or as someone who just played the games casually, you might not experience the same problems that I had with it. I'm not sure if it is just me, but the game did seem quite a bit easier apart from those weird physics glitches that I mentioned earlier. I managed to play through all three games with no problem whatsoever, and some of the boss fights seemed really dumbed down compared to the NES games. Take the dragon boss from this level in Mega Man 2. In the original, it's really fast paced and you really have to worry about jumping onto the right platforms, else you'll be knocked off. And the boss hardly did anything, it all felt a little bit weird. Thankfully though, the unlockable Wily Tower stages were really exciting for me. These were completely brand new levels with completely brand new boss fights, which are actually really interesting fights as well, but the thing that interested me most about this, and the thing that I wish Capcom would have done more of, is actually give you the choice of kitting out your own arsenal of weapons and items from the previous three games. You could choose any power-up you want from any of the games, and then go into the stages using just that set. It really got me thinking about what some of my favourite power-ups are from the Mega Man games. I really enjoyed using the Quick Boomerang, which quickly became one of my favourite items to use. This was by far my favourite thing about this package, and I really wish that Capcom would have made a full game using this idea, because it really did work very well. Honestly though, despite my criticisms, I still did have a great time playing through these games. They're still absolute classics. The level designs and the stage layouts, the themes, and the music, which I'll get to in just a little bit, they all still stand the test of time, and even playing it on a Mega Drive, although it felt a little bit weird, and it wasn't exactly how I'm used to, it still was a lot of fun to play, else I wouldn't have bothered actually completing all three games. So, for gameplay, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5, for the reasons I stated above. And now, let's take a look at the second category, which is audio. 
I am a huge fan of the Mega Man soundtracks, especially the NES games, so I was really interested to see what Capcom did with the very, very different sound chip that comes from the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, and unfortunately I have to say I'm not a fan overall. I think what they did is good with what they could do, but I think the system can do a lot more, if that makes sense. I just prefer how the NES sound chip makes these games sound overall. I think if they tried to be less faithful to the original, it really could have been amazing. But as it stands, it's just a little plain, especially in 50 Hertz. Some of the music is kind of painful to listen to, honestly. Especially some of the music from Mega Man 3, which was never really slowed down to begin with. Just take a listen to this comparison of the incredible title screen music from Mega Man 3. First is the NES. Now let's listen to the same track again on the Mega Drive and you'll see what I mean by how sad it is, honestly. Even though the sound chip does make these tunes sound a little off, they're still really great compositions and just like the level designs, they still really hold up to the test of time. And in fact, because I grew up with the 50Hz versions, some of the songs I actually prefer slowed down. Take this song from Mega Man 2, The Bubble Man Stage. I really like the slow tempo of it. So for the reasons that I stated, I'm kind of ummed and ahed about this, but I'm also going to give the audio a 3 out of 5. Now next up is graphics, and as you've seen throughout this video, the graphics are actually pretty good. I especially love what they've done with the backgrounds and the increased colours that you could get out of the system. There's some really, really nice effects in stages like Mega Man 1's Fireman level, in which the heat makes a nice haze effect, and in Bubble Man stage in Mega Man 2, the waterfall is no longer epilepsy inducing, which is great. The sprites though, they do look a little bit basic, and I feel like the Mega Drive could have put a little bit more detail into them, and they still have quite limited animations. I feel like if you compare this to the Mega Man games that came out on the SNES, the SNES games do look a lot better overall. It's still a really nice graphical update though, and it suits the game really well, so I'm actually going to give the graphics a 4 out of 5. Now the next category is technical, and this is kind of basing what the Mega Drive can actually do, and whether it pushes the system to its limits or not. I feel like the Mega Drive could do a lot more than what they did with the game. The backgrounds, well nice, they are quite static, and the sprites aren't that much better than the NES games, as you can see. Compared to some of Capcom's other output on the system, it does feel a little bit lacking, and I do wonder whether that's why it didn't really get a full release, especially when you compare it to what was happening on the SNES around the same time. It kind of feels a little bit pale in comparison, but it still does have some nice touches, but it doesn't really push the Mega Drive in any specific way, so I'm going to give Technical a 3 out of 5. And for the final category, this is something new that I'm introducing for the physical reviews that I'm going to be doing, and that is a score based on the packaging. As you saw earlier, I have no doubts about this, and I'm sure you guys and girls watching agree, I'm definitely giving the packaging a 10 out of 10. And while I was holding this box, there was something that I didn't show in the beginning, doing the unboxing that I'm going to show you now. The cover, the front cover for the game, is actually interchangeable. So you can actually slide this amazing cover here out, and actually put in this really nice optional artwork. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So in conclusion, I'm sure you can tell that I'm a little bit on the fence with this one. 
For one thing, I am so glad that I finally got a chance to play it on an original console. Of course, all of these years I could have played it on an emulator, but there's just certain game series that I kind of feel dirty doing that, so I am glad that I held out to get a full physical release, and I just love how it looks. But in terms of gameplay, honestly, and it really pains me to say this, it kind of did let me down a little bit, and I am quite glad that I didn't have to spend over a thousand pounds to experience it. Luckily though, all of these complaints that I've had in this review have actually been fixed by fans, at least the ones related to the gameplay. So there's actually a patch that you can do, which I did try out briefly on the Mister, and it actually patches it to restore the same kind of physics that the NES game had. So now there's no sort of extra sliding, you can just tap the D-pad to move along the screen. Everything just feels a lot smoother, they cleaned up some of the other problems as well. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to try and apply that patch to a ROM yourselves. And something else super exciting that just popped up as I was filming this video, a bunch of fans have actually came up with a sequel to Mega Man The Wily Wars that takes place on the three later games on the NES, and I'm super excited to try this out. Take a look at the trailer that's playing over the screen now, it just looks absolutely incredible for a fan project. So definitely go and check that out, I'll put a link in the description as well. Let me know what you thought of the game down in the comments below. Was I too harsh on it? Honestly, I don't think so because of how long I've been waiting and how much this game and series means to me personally. So I really hope you enjoyed my thoughts and opinions on Mega Man The Wily Wars. And like I said, I have done a few Mega Man videos in the past. I'll put one up over here, which I think will be really interesting to a lot of you. This is a review of Mega Man for the Wonder Swan, which is a game that not a lot of people have heard of. So definitely check that video out next. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next week for the next episode. Goodbye.